Well, the NASCAR season has come to a close, but in fact, that does not mean that anyone is actually done working on the 2020 NASCAR season, at least. It's going to talk about a little bit of what happened at ISM Raceway as well. Joining us on the inside lane, he became the youngest late model track champion at Hawkeye Down Speedway in 2009. He's a multi-time karting champion and the inaugural NASCAR Comcast Community Champion of the Year in 2015. Driver of the Donate Life, number 35, from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, it's Joey Gase. Joey, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you. What you do for communities around the nation when you're going around and racing different places, it's just spectacular. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but I mentioned the off-season. It's not really an off-season like you have in other sports where they're out in, I don't know, Maui and stuff, relaxing on a beach. But especially for a guy like you, you're not a multi-millionaire racing for a race team that has 100 guys inside the shop on a given day. You know, for a lower budget driver who doesn't get to have the perks of, say, a Martin Truex Jr. or Kevin Harvick, like most people uh, think of when they think of a NASCAR driver, what does your offseason look like from mid November to getting ready for Daytona in February? Uh, it's still very busy for sure. Like you said, you're not at the, necessarily at the racetrack racing, but uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes going on. But sort of, like right now, I'm. Uh, trying to figure out who exactly I am going to be driving for and, and what my plans are going to be on that spec, but then also uh, also working on the sponsors and what our sponsors are going to be looking like next year and, and all that, and all that never really never really ends. And then, uh, you know, on top of that, my wife and I are having uh, having twins this off season, and we'll actually be going back to Iowa to, uh, to have them. So both of our, uh, our families are from Iowa, so we're going to have it back there that, that have a little extra help <laughs> well congratulations on the twins you do, do you have like colored go karts ready to go for like gender reveal and stuff you're gonna get them in a race car like two months like racing plans already <laughs> <laughs> well we do know they're both identical uh twin boys but uh we are we are still working on other names yet but uh we're we're very excited for sure they uh they can basically come anytime between now and uh in Christmas, so uh, we're excited for them to be here, and uh, when <laughs> and we'll see what it's like. That's for sure. It's going to be a, a big learning experience for sure. Well, congratulations! I'm sure if you ask uh, anyone in the garage at NASCAR, since it seems like everyone has a kid in the garage, uh, it, it changes a little bit now uh, every single week when you go to the racetrack, and hopefully bringing them along for the ride at least once they're a little bit older after birth. But I do want to step back a couple of weeks ago to the. Desert Diamond 200 ISM Raceway when you recognize organ donor Dylan Barrier. He was a former student here in Arizona at Santan Foothills High School. He tragically passed away earlier this year. And you guys did something very special. You had his name and his picture on the back of your number 35 car. You had his family out to the track. How did all this come together in terms of finding Dylan's story and then going and finding his family as well? and celebrating what he did donating his organs uh, after he passed away with his family and having them all out at the track. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, we tried to team up with uh, all the local uh, OPOs and, and Donate Life organizations when we, we race across the country. And, and luckily for us, uh, Donate Life Arizona is a, a very big and, and strong partner of ours. And uh, Dylan, like you said, unfortunately, uh, uh, passed away, and, and when that happened uh, on his driver's license, he, he chose that he wanted to be an organ eye and, and tissue donor at a very young age, his mom said, and when he got his driver's license, it was something that was uh, was really important to him, and that's uh, really cool. And, you know, and, un unfortunately, I never got the chance to meet Dylan, but obviously just alone by wanting to be an organ donor being something that was so important to him to, to help others, I think definitely shows how how great of a person Dylan was, but uh, uh, they've been working closely now with uh, Donate Life Arizona and being, being big vo volunteers, and Donate Life Arizona was very appreciative for Dylan and, and his family and, and everything that they continue to do to this day. So they uh, they asked them, you know, if they would like to come to a race and that we would uh, like to honor his legacy, and we uh, we actually surprised them with uh with the picture being on the car, they they knew they were coming to the race and that we're honoring his uh his legacy, but they they never knew that he was actually going to be on the car. So we uh 
we actually did a private reveal for them uh, right before the weekend, and uh, it was so cool to see how how excited and honored they were, and and also how surprised. And uh, they were they weren't big race fans before, but they they definitely are now. So it was uh, it was something really cool to see. And this isn't the first time that you've done this, recognizing uh, young organ donors at the track and having pictures on the cars. What's it like when you're able to bring their family to a racetrack, interact with them, uh, thank, thank their family for what they did for possibly saving other people's life with these organs and, and just interacting with them and being able to share that moment with them when they see that uh, typically their child is on your car? Yeah, it's you know we we honor anyone of of all ages, but it's 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 something that's definitely uh, very cool and, and special and in many different ways. So you know, like we we said, like you know, Dylan, he he saved a lot of lives by being an organ donor, but he's still saving even more lives now by be being on the car and, and doing things like this and promoting donations. So others out there, you know, will think, well, hey, you know what, maybe maybe I should be a registered organ donor and like Dylan was. So it, he continues to save lives that way as well. But it's also really cool for me and, and the family because unfortunately it's not, it's not every day you meet someone that kind of sort of went through the same thing that, uh, that you had to go through. So it's not every day I meet someone that's also a, uh, a donor family member and, and it's, it's the same for them. So you kind of, you know, you, you swap stories and, and tell them each other's experience and you, you really feel for that for that person as well and it's just something that's really cool to, to honor them and you know what let, let them know that Dylan's never going to be never going to be forgotten and of course you usually have one of the more unique race cars at the track it always seems like you have something fun going on with your Xfinity series car uh, having donate life in multiple states on the hood just about every time that you can and typically donate life arizona i always look forward to seeing that neon green and black car uh, when i'm walking down the grid and whatnot but uh, of course your mother was an organ donor as well how did you and donate life kind of create this relationship w with each other being gained, getting them out at race tracks and then being able to recognize family members and why is it so important to you to do that on a, what most people consider a very intense work weekend yeah, it's something that, you know, all started, like you said, with my mom. She uh, she passed away, unfortunately, in, uh, in April of 2011 of a, a sudden brain aneurysm. And uh, when that when that happened, the doctors asked us if she liked to be an organized tissue donor. And and at that time, it was it was something we never really talked about before. And her driver's license was, was left at home because we rushed to the hospital. But uh, we knew she could no longer continue her life. She wanted to do whatever she could to help others continue theirs. So... So ultimately, we said yes, and later we found out she was able to help save and improve the lives of 66 people, which was amazing to us, and we've been actually fortunate enough to to meet two of her recipients. And not only that, when we we went back home and, and found her driver's license, she was already a registered organ donor on there. So uh, ever since that day, I wanted to do whatever I could to uh, raise awareness for donation because I've learned that there's over 110,000 people on the wait list nationwide unfortunately waiting for a life-saving uh organ and unfortunately some of those people are passing passing away every day on the wait list and uh and not only that i want people to not only say yes to donation but i also want them to have that talk with their loved ones so if they're ever in the same situation my family and i were in they would already know what their what their loved one would want and uh not only that but we also want to honor all those affected by it by as well I do want to step back into racing real quick. Uh, you're just 26 years old, but your NASCAR career has been since 2011, and we've talked about your relationship with Donate Life Arizona, and uh, NASCAR.com had a great piece on you earlier this year about how uh, it's sometimes unique at this level to have the driver going out and finding those sponsors and something that you'll be doing uh, probably very vigorously this, uh, this off season is finding that sponsorship. When it comes to maybe misconceptions that fans have, what is it like for you coming up through the ranks of NASCAR as just a 26-year-old and trying to get through and get into cars through finding sponsorship, sometimes week in and week out? Yeah, you know, it definitely can be tough. But, you know, for the for the most part, a lot of fans do do understand how it is for, for, for the most part. You know, not everyone can be in, unfortunately, in, and Joe Gibbs equipment or, or Hendrick equipment or, or Roush or RCR or 
Penske. Um, you know, there's only a few of those cars available, and, and unfortunately, you know, it's not saying that, you know, NBM might team that we can't be at that level, but unfortunately we just don't have the funds to, to do that, that there's just so much that really, really goes into it. You know, just an easy example would be, uh, you know, tires. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we come in for pit stops, we're not putting brand new tires on because we don't have the budget to do that. Uh, a set of tires is about 2,500 bucks. And, you know, if it's a, uh, if it's six set allotment for a race, that's uh, that's a lot of money. Um, you know, four tires or four sets of tires is you know ten grand. So that's uh, that's the stuff that we're going up against. That you know, that's one of the biggest thing I don't think fans understand. Just because we're changing tires doesn't mean we're putting new tires on. And, and new tires are definitely almost always way better than uh, they, way better than used tires. And just you know, all the research and the and the development that that goes into it. But um, you know, it's. Uh, something to where every nascar driver that is here in the sport and, and no matter what car there there is a reason for that and it's something that they've done on the way they they get here and you know there's only on every given sunday there's only 40 spots available and uh, you know there's how many thousands of drivers out there which you know it's it's like that for every sport but you know i like to say it's you know even a harder nascar granted that there might be more football players out there than there is NASCAR drivers, but, you know, one NFL football team normally has, you know, a minimum of, of 40 players per team to where there's only 40 spots available every Sunday. So, you know, it's uh, when you're there, it's something that you're just very thankful to be there for. But no matter what, you know, we're all big competitors and we're always doing the best we can and we always want to go get that trophy. All right, Joey, before I let you go, I want to play a game. I play with all the drivers. It's called Quick Time. Got some rapid-fire questions. Looking for some rapid-fire answers in return. These are all going to be mostly your opinion, though, so I got no pop quizzes for you. You ready to set Quick Time, Joey? Oh, yeah. All right, first and foremost, my favorite question to ask. Your favorite track to race at, regardless of what you're driving? Oh, uh, man, I'd have to, I'd actually have to say Phoenix or, uh, or Iowa. Good answer. Your home track and my home track. So good answer right there. Now, <laughs> you've done a lot with Donate Life when it comes to recognizing and thanking family members and donors. Is there one race weekend that stands out to you because you've had pictures on the cards, you've had ha handprints on the cards? Is there any one of d d just an, a weekend of some sort of event that really stands out to you as in, man, that right there was a phenomenal thing to do that we were able to put together? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say that was uh, Talladega in, uh, in 2015. Um, uh, Fox actually did a story on my mom and, and donation for Mother's Day before the race, and then uh, we had Donate Life uh, Alabama on the car and, and two honorees, and then we actually really made the race, but we finished fifth. So that was, uh, that was definitely an amazing weekend for us. What is the most difficult part of driving with an underfunded organization that regular fans, they just don't get? Uh, we don't get sim time or, or testing time. Uh, so they're, you know, when the track's constantly changing, they have sim programs that tell them what they should have to do to the car. And they, they test that with their drivers back at the sim program. And we, uh, we just do not have that. All right. Last one. And this one might be a little touchy. And I don't know if there's a right answer here yet or not. Leaders in baby names for the twins yet. Is there a leader? Oh uh, man, we <laughs> we my wife gets mad at me all the time. Actually, on this, we're uh, we're still working on baby names, but uh, I I say Junior and Jose, but she's uh, she's not going for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well that'll do it, Joey. Thank you. I really appreciate your time, what you've been doing, and all the different uh, communities and getting together and recognizing those organ donors and raising awareness is just really cool. There's very few race cars that show up to the track almost every single week. And it's not just a sponsor, it's a cause too. So it's really unique. It's really great to have you guys out there doing that almost every single week. And of course, just this morning though, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This was the Inside Lane. Once again, thank you to Joey Gacy. And check out all of our racing content on sports360az.com.